Hello, my name is Dr. Siobhan Hugh-Jones and I'm a lecturer in psychology at the Institute of Psychological Sciences at the University of Leeds. This podcast is about attachment and in particular the internal working model as proposed by the British psychiatrist John Bowlby. The podcast is structured into three parts. In part one, we'll cover the core principles of attachment theory. In part two, we'll examine Bowlby's concept of the internal working model and how this links to different types of attachment. Part three is concerned with the adult attachment interview and what it tells us about the stability of internal working models. We begin a consideration of attachment theory with the shocking story of Baby P, which hit the headlines in 2008. This picture was taken when Baby P was 12 months old, just months before his mother's boyfriend and lodger started to abuse him. His mother and grandmother were also accused of physical abuse and neglect of Baby P. This picture, taken in 2008, just a few months before Baby P died, shows a thin and exhausted child, his face smeared with chocolate to conceal bruising. Baby P died from a series of horrific injuries, including a broken back, all sustained at the hands of adults over a period of eight months. Whilst there was public outcry about the child's death and the culpability of health professionals in that, there was considerable shock that a mother could be complicit in acts of abuse of her own child. The judge described the mother in particular as manipulative and self-centered, and she was sworn at by the public in court. Newspapers reported that she would be hated forever. Yet at the time, some psychologists were at pains to point out that many adults who fail to care appropriately for their children are likely to have themselves been poorly parented and even abused. Many also pointed out that removing children from their parents and carers is not necessarily a straightforward solution as children form attachments to them, even in the case of parental cruelty. These points raise some key questions about attachment. What is the nature of attachment between a child and its carer? How can it exist in the context of maltreatment? And how does one's attachment experience as a child influence one's ability to parent when older? John Bowlby offered a theory of attachment that has been profoundly influential in the way that psychologists think about the early relationships we have, or at least those aspects of relationships that are shaped by threat and the need for security. Bowlby developed his ethological theory of attachment in reaction to Freud's theory of covered love, or the secondary drive hypothesis, which hypothesized that infants stay near to carers only because they feed them, and not because of a primary need for human connection. The work of Harlow and Harlow with rhesus monkeys, which you may have come across already, was a clear challenge to this way of thinking. The evolutionary origins of development also influenced Bowlby's thinking, particularly the proposition that through natural selection, social behaviour has developed as an effective survival-enhancing system following millions of years of adaptation to the environment. In ethology, work by Conrad Rentz about imprinting in animals, which explains connections between adult animals and their young offspring, triggered Bowlby to think about what mechanisms were in place among humans that indicated an evolved survival-enhancing social system. He went on to argue that there were indeed cognitive, emotional and behavioural features exhibited by infants and their carers, which he believed characterised a human attachment system. These included gazing, smiling, clinginess and crying. Indeed, the sound of a baby's cry is believed to have evolved to a pitch which is most compelling to get a human to respond. These kinds of behaviours are termed fixed action patterns and in attachment theory are argued to be wired into a baby's behavioural system from birth. Thus Bowlby believed there is a species-specific system of behaviours that leads to certain predictable outcomes which contribute to reproductive fitness. Bowlby argued that the evolved attachment system enhances reproductive fitness not only by keeping the child near to a caring adult but also because through that caring relationship, a child would experience optimum conditions for psychological, emotional and intellectual growth. Bowlby stated his ideas formally in his maternal deprivation hypothesis, where he argued that a child must experience a warm, 
intimate and continuous relationship with its mother or permanent mother figure in order to experience satisfactory emotional and intellectual growth. He argued this must happen between one and three years of age. Prolonged deprivation of such care would, he argued, have grave and far-reaching effects on a child's character. Research has long established, of course, that it is not just the mother who can provide a secure base for a child. And Bowlby's ideas about mothers, called monotropism, has been replaced with a recognition that fathers can be a secure base for children, as well as grandparents and other significant carers. Mary Ainsworth extended Bowlby's ideas, emphasising that attachment relationships are based not solely on a parent's ability to provide a continuous warm relationship with the child, but rather on the carer's ability to act as a secure base for them. The concept of a secure base is pivotal in attachment theory. In describing the importance of a secure base, Mary Ainsworth was drawing attention to the competing behavioural drives in the child, namely to feel safe and secure, but also to explore and discover their worlds. Healthy attachments will develop, she thought, when carers can sensitively judge what the child needs in any given context, given these competing behavioural goals. Based on the now famous strange situation test, the ability of a carer to regulate an infant's anxiety in novel or frightening contexts is deemed to establish a secure base, crucial for healthy attachment and later psychological well-being in the child. Work with the strange situation test helped Ainsworth and others identify different attachment types thought to be derived from different levels of sensitivity displayed by carers to the infant's signal of fear and their subsequent need for proximity and security, or their need for exploration and their subsequent need to be less close to carers. There are currently four attachment types recognised in attachment research, each characterised by a response pattern from both the infant and the carer. The carer's response to the infant is thought to be shaped by their ability to picture and empathise with the infant's mental state. Securely attached infants seek contact in frightening contexts and are easily comforted by carers who are able to provide warmth and security. Insecure avoidant infants avoid or ignore their carer after separation. Carers of such children are likely to be consistently unresponsive to the infant. Infants classified as insecure resistant are angry and demanding towards their parent in frightening contexts yet resist being comforted. Carers of such infants are likely to be more emotionally demonstrative, but are themselves inconsistent and not particularly sensitive. They offer comfort on their own terms, rather than according to a child's needs. Research by Maine and Solomon in 1986 led to the description of a fourth attachment type called insecure disorganised. Studies suggest it is linked with frightening maternal behaviour, like suddenly looming over a baby's face, and may also be associated with mothers who are themselves frightened. Children who are abused or neglected are also more likely to suffer from disorganised attachment. In the strange situation test, disorganised babies lack a coherent strategy to deal with their attachment needs and they show a mixture of approach and avoidance behaviours. Children of such carers still establish an attachment with them as it is their main source of information about how relationships work.